coming to do <laughs> a home assessment, you know, for all the energy setting right. things that we need to be doing, I'm going to be there. <laughs> is is this going to? Yes, there's people joining us right now, so we will officially start with the segment in a little bit. Yes, okay. but we're networking. We'll, we'll okay. have virtual people join us. So, does anybody have any questions for Julie before we turn it over to Beverly? I just want to say, very well spoken. Oh, thank you. I, that's my marketing background. I used to do a lot of speeches and had to work with CEOs quite a bit. So I, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think when you've been out of it, I've been in kid land, three and five year olds, you know. <laughs> we I think I'm speaking that. child ease or something most of the time. So I appreciate that. Just in case we have people coming in after we start. Is that okay. Uh, Beverly, why don't you introduce your business and tell us what you do. You've got samples here that you can pass around. So let's hear about it. All right. Should I just stand here or sit or what? It doesn't matter. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> hello, little friend. Um, my company is Glory Shine Adornment. It's okay. They okay. can hear you. Okay. Um, and it's about really about Glory Shine to me because it gave me the gifts, the creative talents to um to create. And I'm having a lot of fun. I started last October, uh, last fall, and uh, I'm wearing a piece that I made specifically for myself. It's very artsy and a Jesus Mary walk. So I love <laughs> that one. Um, these are the color oh, wow. snowy. She has. Fun for snowy. I don't know. <laughs> Some decor glass pieces and a little um, the cameo with two um, like Greek ladies putting another um, head on a pedestal. And then this one's really fun. Where do you where do you sell then, or do you go to art shows or do trunk shows, or how do you get yourself out there? How do you get your word out about your business? Um, mostly through business and through coffee, the relationships I have here. And, um, you know, they get word of mouth more than anything. But Sherry has actually got me um, to have a, a uh, jewelry display in the booksellers. Oh, very nice, yes. Yeah. And you're a part of what program? I am a part of the professional blues program. And it has been very, very helpful um, in you know, getting me into position or grooming me for success. I'm uh, given a lot of advantages. Um, I'm going to have in October, I'm going to have a professional image makeover. And hey, it's wonderful. So good to see you. Being featured in the promotion of the old table. Thank you. Just kind of seat. Here is a coffee. Is that what you like? Yes. Thank you. I think you have this one on last week. This is one. Yeah, and I revised it slightly. I'm always, you know, changing and seeing how I can improve on things. Thanks. Hurry. Need a blend. Nina. Beverly. Beverly. Me, yeah, Beverly on the jewelry. Yeah. The jewelry. Yeah. 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 Right. Nina, my mother. Elizabeth Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. And our newest member, you. professional Hi. member, Julie. Nice, nice to meet you, Julie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Nina is going to tell us what she does. She is our BOCI business advisor. And is amazing. So yes, she is. Um, let's go now in the networking session. And um, I'd like to say I'm so excited to have my mom with me today. We're having a girl's day. We're combining a girl's day with this sharing on purpose. And uh, I'm very proud of my mother, uh, who has authored, I believe, 11 books, 10 books. And we have some displayed here on the table. So, mom, tell us more about you. Well, I'm sure he's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just by the grace of God that I started to write. And uh, I have authored 10 books, and I have one just about ready for, for the printer again. And uh, that's about what I do. Okay. So I'm a homemaker. 
Well, you Preacher also fly. travel with, with Dad. <laughs> yeah, some of the times he's flying. And so is there a common theme of your books? Actually, the first three, the first four that I wrote were nonfiction. They were uh, some of them. Well, the first one I wrote was concerning just our family, short stories, funny things, and sad things, and pasturing and raising kids and all that. Thing. And then the the, uh, the next three were called Abundantly Pardon, and they were they were true books about people, different stories, testimonies of people, how they had found God or whatever. And then I lean more now to fiction, trying to reach the young people. Let them know that you, when you, get, when you get ready to marry, it's not just a pretty face you marry. You need the same values. Right. Yeah, the same yes. language. Right? <laughs> Christian, Christian fiction, which yes. is has yes. been very successful yes. for you. Yes. That's right. And hey, you, so you're on your 11th, is that correct? Or on I know. I'm about That's two thirds finished. I kind of got a, a writer's walk right now. You know, <laughs> just get to a certain place. I don't seem to be able to move on, but. Uh, this particular book I'm writing about, I mostly write about young ladies, but this one's going to be about a young man. And uh, one of his friends gets gets killed, gets murdered, and, and I've just kind of got to that spot. But it's a like I'm trying to tell the kids, don't get on the internet and and get your mates from the internet. You know, don't don't do this chat room stuff because that's how she how she got in trouble. Be very careful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Mom, for sharing. Sure. I, I can, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Did please. you find it hard to get initially get published? No, not really, because I self-publish. Oh, okay. And I, okay. Um, I, the first four or five books that I published was from uh, Morris out of uh, Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, and then the last ones I have done have been through the United Pentecostal Publishing House. So actually, you now are published by a publishing company. It's, no, it's, not really. It's still self-published. Is it with mm -hmm. the um, publishing mm -hmm. house? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go now to Nita Black. That yes. Be, yes. Would please be nice to sell online. <laughs> yes, you know they anyone they who has a website with yes. opportunities? Yes. That would be That's a good right. link. <laughs> to Even if you just did a landing page, mm -hmm. so that you know mm -hmm. people click on topics yeah. or. Series. And she's gonna, mom's gonna look at me and say, well, let's get busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm from the generation that knows very little about computer. I have one, but the, there's something you can't live with and you can't live without. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have okay. no problem with it. So we are now going to go to you, Nita, and tell us. I've already told what I know about you, and it's all good. So tell us more. Well, I develop business plans and help people access financing for the business. Um, I like to work with women and I'm an advocate for women in business. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting food on the table and I am an advocate for Christian values and passing that along to mm -hmm. the younger generation. I think it's uh, awesome you know, to have, for me to be able, because I have three girls mm -hmm. and eight grandchildren, and so it would be awesome for me to say, well, hey, you know, this is what I, you know, this, this would be a great birthday book mm -hmm. for. Um, I have them, I have several girls, ages 6, 9, 12, mm -hmm. and my granddaughter. So these would be, to me, you know, initially, I think they'd be great. Mm -hmm. so, so I help people organize their business and then move forward, typically with a growth uh, strategy, how to build a business internally mm -hmm. through sales and profits. And then you might need some financing along the way, but that's that's one group of uh, people that I work with. Mm -hmm. And then I, I also work with um, companies, like I, I mentioned this morning, a good prospect for me would be someone who's selling their business, mm -hmm. maybe he's been in business for 20, 30 years, doesn't have a family that's going to take it over, doesn't have a written business plan, or needs to get a lot of those ideas out of their head and on paper so that they can present it to uh, people who would be interested in buying into the business. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And Nita is so good for me as being the business advisor for Business of the International because I'm a creative mind. My mother can attest to that. And I I can chase rabbits all day long because I'm constantly coming up with ideas and, oh, okay, let's do this, let's do it, and making it happen. But needing to look at a model so that if something does come to me that I don't change the model, unless it's something major that Nita and I discuss about changing the model. 
So she's keeping me focused to where I can say, yes, it fits the model, or no, it doesn't fit the model. So let's talk about the model. What is business over coffee? And then I'm going to turn this over to you, Shelley. Uh, business over coffee is a networking slash social media platform, and we work with professionals who want to optimize three different things. Or what are they, Beverly? Number one, social media. Social media. Okay, then number ne two. Networking events. Networking events is number three, and number two is educational exchange, which is a lot of what we're doing right now. And so we make all of that happen through having four events a month. This is the fifth Thursday, so we are so excited to have Shelly Bauer with us. We want to welcome our virtual viewers. All of our events are virtual, with the exception of Dutch Lunch, which is next week. Um, but go to our site and join us online at businessovercoffee.biz. BOC Nashville, everybody welcome BOC Nashville um, that will be tuning in with us today. We also have a Canadian um, blogger, expert blogger, expert writer, um, has over a million followers that joined BOCI yesterday online. Yes, yes, and so we're very, very excited about what's happening here because we're bringing things like today to you, sharing on purpose, and Shelly will tell you more about that, but we give you more connections, collaboration, exposure, and business. Those are the four things we give you tools for, and we're bringing everyone together. So that's what BOC is all about. Any questions? Okay. I think I've educated everyone in here already about BOC. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you make the money? <laughs> you asked me that. Uh, yes, very good question. We have membership programs ranging from free online, um, but I encourage you to join as a professional member, which is what Julie just did. And Julie, you are now going to have your interview on the radio. We're going to get you scheduled for that. We've been working on that via email. Your BOC TV, which is an internet uh, recording of you and I sitting down talking about your business. You'll get the links for all of those things to share on your website or your social media followers. And you come to all of our events free as a professional member, which is only $100 per year. And then we have a corporate membership for four or more um, in a corporation for $325 per year, and that's unlimited. So if they have 50 employees, all 50 of those employees can come and participate in what we do. Did that pass the yes, test? Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sounds Nita. good. And in terms of return on investment, before you came into the room, Julie introduced herself to me and what she does, and she now has a new referral. I actually asked her to follow me home for one wow. year. So, you know, the return on investment begins immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there you got we go. the right, right product or service. Now, I know we're into your time, so I'm going to introduce you. Okay, so, great. I would like to formally introduce very good friend of mine, Shelly Bauer. And uh, this book is a must-have, Integrity-Based Communication. And it talks about communicating with integrity, clarifying your values, and living a balanced life. Have you trained me well? Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> and I will say I speak from personal experience. And we'll talk more about that, but it was life-changing when we went to Shelley's Living on Purpose seminar, when I say we, my husband and I. And um, so it's very much a pleasure to have you on board with us today because I know you don't do this just because someone asks you. You do it because you're investing your time and your time is valuable. And so for the viewers and for those of you that are here, Shelley normally charges $2.97 for this event. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And for our virtual viewers, we invite you to just join us around the table. It's going to be very intimate. I'm not going to stand up and make this big presentation, but I invite you to come in and work with us. I'm going to, I'm going to, can we hold this up to the camera so they can see what we're doing Absolutely. and maybe they can replicate one? I need that one back. Okay. But, um, let's see, I can get mine from the gray. Perfect. Well, Nita, could you just, uh, Send one down to Julie. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at nine different life domains, and I'm going to invite our virtual viewers to create the diagram for yourself so you can follow along with us. It's you, you draw a pie, and in the middle, create a little circle that's got your name in it, and then give yourself nine different pieces of the pie, if you will, segments, 
And those nine domains is what I call them are body, mind, spirituality, romance, family, community, money, career, and play. And what I'm going to ask you to do is go through these three parts of the exercise with us that will allow us to take a snapshot of where we are in our life right now, where it is we'd like to be. In fact, we're going to give ourselves a grade from A to F, or if you will, zero to 100%, 100% being perfect, zero being it's the pits, it couldn't possibly get worse. And then thirdly, we're going to create some action steps that can get you closer to where you want to go. I want to set it up by saying that we're going to use the principles of integrity-based communications. They're not only principles, they're behaviors. And I'm going to quickly cover those because this may be an opportunity for you to take an introspective look at where you are today and where it is at a deeper level you want to be. I mean, it's just us. Nobody's watching this. Whoops, we've just gone dark. Just it's okay. It. Okay. Nobody's watching us. You don't have to share this with anybody. You can if you want to. But to just really get honest about where you are in your life today in the context of balance. So tell your truth quick or faster and ask for what you want as we go through these exercises. Ask questions of yourself and and of your life. What, how, how are your needs being met? What's important to you? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would be the ideal business or, or home life or romance? And then pay attention to those answers because they're all inside and they will well up if you give yourself the opportunity to just listen to what your inner guidance is. And then finally, you're going to have the opportunity to make some agreements with yourself and to um, be accountable for what you do. Now, I'm not asking anybody right now to be accountable, but at the end, you're going to have the opportunity to say, how badly do I really want this? And do I want to be able to have an accountability partner who will help me? And we can create that here in this room. Certainly, there are all kinds of connections already that exist. And Julie, you could be my accountability partner if you want to. So what we're going to look at in these nine different domains is first, on a scale of incredibly out of balance over here, let me use weight because that's one that everybody can relate to. We all go up and down with our weight. And let's say I've let myself turn into a couch potato, whether it's because I've had children and it's just like I can't seem to get back where I want to be, or perhaps I've dealt with an illness that's allowed me, I know I was on steroids for 30 days and felt like a little puppy toad, and, and the weight did climb. And more recently, I went on a cruise. And if, if that's not a place to enjoy wretched excess, what is? So if, but if you got really out of shape over here, and, and your doctor was seriously concerned about what was happening with your health, that would be one end of the extreme. And on the other end would be, as you decide you're going to start eating right, you're going to start exercising, you're going to get up off the couch, you're not going to watch TV, and all of a sudden, you've gone from this extreme to now you're exercising two or three hours a day and you're neglecting some of the things that are important to you. You skip church, you know, so that you can exercise because that's become, you know, an addiction, if you will. These are both ends of the extreme. Living a balanced life is about being in the middle. Now, I can tell you, everybody in here has probably had a tragedy that pulled you off course. And, and even though you have very clear set goals in terms of balance, when my father was dying, I can tell you, the energy was going over there because that was the family. That's what I needed to take care of. And sometimes it's our career or the money. If you lost a job recently or you know someone who has, you know how that can change everything. But let's look at each of the nine domains and just kind of get a, a feel for what we're talking about. In the body domain, I just talked about weight. And what are some of the things that if you were looking at the body domain and sitting down with your doctor, what would your doctor say to you about the things he or she is looking at for you to have health and balance and health? What are some of those things? Nutrition. Nutrition. General wellness. Yes. Thank you, Beverly. What else? Exercise. Exercise. Absolutely. What else? Heart healthy diet. Heart healthy diet. Yes, ma'am. What else? What about sleep? 
not just the quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep. What about um, the ability to reduce stress? You know, we're all overloaded right now with technology. It's, it's a friend, but it also can be a master to us, and we can get really stressed out by trying to get too much stuff done. Those are the kind of things that we're looking at. So let's move on to the mind. There, there is research now that very clearly says that the body and the mind are connected. In fact, all three of these, these first ones are body, mind, and spirituality. They're all connected. To be a whole and balanced person, they're all going to kind of morph into one another. But what I'm really talking about today from the mind is, it's really two components. One is your emotional health. If you are dealing with a lot of stress, how well are you dealing with that, you know, stress? And what are you doing to help you stay in that centered place, if you will, despite the chaos that's going on? What's the other part of the domain that I'm looking at? Nita, you've done this before. What's the other part of mind that I'm asking us to take a look at from a balanced perspective? Focus. It, 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 yes, it is focused on attitude, but specifically what I'm looking at is what are we doing to continue to feed our mind, to grow our mind. For instance, I've got an 88-year-old mom now, and her body is more feeble. She's, she's a bionic woman. She's had knees and hips replaced. We took her on a cruise a couple of weeks ago, that very same cruise where I gained five pounds. <laughs> and we took her walker because we didn't know how long we were going to be from the, from the suites to the, to the dining room. So she was taken care of physically, but listen to what she's doing to take care of herself in the mind domain. I packed that silly Scrabble game on the twirling Lazy Susan, if you will. I took up the space because I knew that, for, oh, she's just in heaven. She is a competitor at Scrabble. So two to three games a day we played. Ruta, my 21-year-old protege, was with us who's from Lithuania, so she's... She's mastered English, but she's using words she's never right. used before. AI, what is that? That's a three-toed sloth. Well, <laughs> so my mom, you know, has really playing Scrabble for her. She's a competitor. She wants to win. And when I win, she says, I taught you really well, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> said, yes, like mom, you did. I'm very much like my mother. And now I can say, thank God. But it's the things that we're doing that get those dendrites to keep on growing. And at your age... You know, you're not even worried about that. Trust me, the more you can you can strengthen how your brain is growing, isn't that right, Elizabeth? The fact that you will continue to write these books and create and move through writer's block, you know, it's, it, that's what keeps us nimble and sharp. The spirituality domain, we, we discussed before we started on air, our belief systems, and there are a lot of people here who, who share the same belief systems, but I'm going to get away from church, so to speak, and look at spirituality as being that place where you're really connected to whatever the, the higher power is to you, whatever you name that higher power, whether it's God or Jesus or, or you know, the universal intelligence, whatever. But it's something that you know that's bigger than you are, that's beyond you are, that, as, as uh, our friends on Star, Star Wars would say, that binds the universe together, that, that energy field, that love, or whatever. And... What are some of the things that let you know if you're connected to that infinite source, that creator? You don't have um, inner peace. Inner peace. What else? Contentment. Contentment. What else? I'm going to throw in joy. I mean, I know yeah. when I'm connected, and I know when I'm not connected, and I know what I need to do to get back. What else? Enthusiasm. 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 God within. Yes. What else? Okay, well, you've got the, you, what are the, so those are some of the things that we've been looking at, and that's a, that's, you may add some things to it, but that, generally speaking, that's what we're talking about. Romance. How many people in the room are married? Yep. Happy. Okay, so I'm happy too, and I hope that in the romance domain, that's exactly what you're talking about, it's the person you're married to, and if you're not, because believe me, when I started doing this work, the last thing I wanted was another husband. In fact, I told this man that I adore that I've been married to for almost 13 years on the first day, getting married again is not a goal of mine. That's Seven okay. months later, we were married. <laughs> we're still he like, took it as a challenge. We're still like teenagers. <laughs> but my point is, what we're looking at is, again, in balance. I said to the Russian student who introduced us, who was a pianist at the University of Memphis, I said, you know, getting married again is not a goal. 
On the other hand, I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. So I'm allowing myself to be in that neutral space where I want God's will for my life, not mine. And so either way, I'm going to enjoy the company. And what did that mean? I had to start really liking me, knowing me, loving me, trusting me. And I said to her, I'm very clear about what my values are now. I wasn't when I got married first. And this, this is my three by five card. You just saw my three by five card. <laughs> I, I wasn't gutsy enough to ask for a man who was a phenomenal cook. I mean, he's a chef. It wasn't on my list, but I got it. That was that was a God wink. It was a lanyard. <laughs> You've been so good about obeying me and following what you think I want for you. I'm going to give you a bonus. <laughs> So, but romance is how comfortable are you about where you are? And if you're not, what are you doing about it? Okay. Family domain, for those of us who are married, we're not living with our family of origin anymore. But, but even if you're living alone, um, I want you to focus on the family if you're not in a, in a, you know, a traditional mom, dad, kids right now, or even a single parent right now. But bounce back to your point, family of origin. I want to ask you to look at that in terms of how healthy and balanced does that feel to you now? Because it took me a long time to become a really good friend to my mom. In fact, it's a miracle that she didn't kill me, that she let me live long enough to be a good friend. Because I was a pill when I was 16 years old. I, I don't know. Since it's all women at the table, I'm sure you can't relate to that. <laughs> Community, I'm asking us to focus on where the family ends and where the rest of the world picks up. So, for instance, Business Over Coffee International is community for me. My church is community for me. My neighborhood is community for me. So, one of the, what are the things that would let you know that you're in a balanced way with your community? Anybody? What are some examples that would let you know that you're in a good place in terms of community? Feeling support. Feeling support. And what does that look like? Uh, how does it feel? Because I think it's a, when I feel supported, I, it's a feeling of uh, positive energy that comes to me from other people around me. Oh, from other people around you. That's what I was trying to get at. Community is about how you connect and interact with other people. What are some of the behaviors that we can do that show that we're really plugged into the community? Smile in the world smiles back. Smile in the world smiles back. That's Beverly. I think willing to share. Willing to share. Willingness to share. And boy, you certainly model that. She's a giver. Collaboration. Collaboration. It's a different word for that. Same thing. Same thing. So let me let me give a couple of other examples. When you look around your neighborhood and you're the only one who's doing recycling, you feel like you're making a contribution to the community. No. Yeah. And yes, I feel I feel <laughs> personal responsibility, and I don't like seeing it not reflected in the right. And so, since you you choose to live in a place of non-judgment, can you gently coax people into that by explaining what that means to the planet, or what it means to that would mean becoming an advocate? Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of energy and focus away from where I'm at in life right now. Okay, so, so you know where you are. Answer, yeah. okay. So another example would be voting. You know, you may be among the 50% who's really irritated at the other party. And you go, I don't want either one of them. Yeah, right. And so you don't vote. Well, is that being a good member of the community? No. You can't, right. you can't complain if you weren't part of the process. So we'll move on from community. I think you get a, a bigger picture of what we're talking about. Money. This is where Nita really lights up since she helps so many people get on top of their financial and cash flow positions in business. Um, but very simplistically, let me say that, well, I'll ask questions and you don't have to raise your hand. Do you run out of money before the end of the month? Or do you run out of month before the end of your money? In other words, is there, a, and even if you don't have, quote, enough money in the world terms, you know, you, it's said that you can tell a lot about a person by looking at the checkbook. And the widow, who had very little, gave more than the rich man who had much. So money, it, it's really in balance. How do you feel about where you are? And if you're uncomfortable about it, what is it you do 
to get into a different space. So we said that one of the things that we would do today is share. This may be an opportunity where one of the gurus can share with us what she's done to help business owners that's certainly, certainly applicable to how we're doing our personal life. And especially right now, there's so many people who are in places they never thought they'd be. I can tell you, John and I have pushed our retirement age out because the 401k took a dive. It became a 201k. Anybody can relate to that? <laughs> Let's move on to the career domain. I used to not have career in here, but FedEx made me put it in because so many people that I train there are very focused on their careers. So, where are you today in your career? Are are you living in a in a position of service that that feed, that feeds you? You know, we we talked about today um, how we're. Well, I didn't actually mention this, but think of it this way. As it, as it relates to money or anything else, we all are spending time, energy, creativity, money every day. We all have resources that we're spending. And are you spending them the way you want to as it relates to your career? Some of us do things like this. You know, the market is not buying living on purpose right now for the most part. They may buy into the concept, but they go, I don't have the extra money to be able to do the miserable. I believe in it so much that I'm willing to put it out there just because I know how it can transform people's lives, as Sherry said. So apply that to your career. What are the, some of the things that you could look at right now in your career domain to let you know if you're where you want to be? I know Julie talked about it. I've picked up a new client every day for the past year. Wow. And she loves what she's doing. Wow. I mean, I would say you're at 100%, probably. Well, I, I, but I always am evaluating my business. So right yeah. now I'm looking at making sure the clients I'm choosing to bring on are, are going to fulfill the passion that I have of why I chose to do this. Awesome. But I'm able to make that choice. So, and you can. That's one of the beauties of being right. self-employed with a good book of business. Now you can start saying, I can afford to say no then. Because mm -hmm. because she's blah 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 and not in a not in a judgmental way but to just say there's not a good fit here you still have to love what you do that's you right. to, to have your own business that's right. now granted I'm always looking at I'm a, I'm a money person in my brain so I'm always looking at saying no means that one day you may not be busy so it's hard to it's hard to say no because mm -hmm. there's there's always going to be a time when business slows mm -hmm. and you've got to make sure that you're you know, having clients that may not be my ideal client is still a learning experience. It always is. So there's that juggle, well, too. Well, it's, 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 it's so well, it's well, let's move on to the play domain. That's my favorite domain. I, I think that there's really an eight-year-old inside each and every one of us that is just crying to be let out. An eight-year-old. I have one that's home. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the eight-year-old that breaks the jar of pickles <laughs> and you know, fess up to it. <laughs> and yet, my father worked with me in the after retirement in, in my marketing and communications firm. And the first time he ever saw me do this exercise, he did it with everybody else in the class. And he later back at the office, he was very reflective. And he said, honey, for me, it's not about reconnecting. He said, I never play this job. And it was like, whoa, I wow. never heard that before. He said, I always had to be that. And I said, well, it's a good thing you're working with me now. I think we should close shop right now. Go hop in the convertible and take a ride. <laughs> we need to go to the office supply store anyway. Wink, wink. <laughs> so anyway, the play domain, what are some of the things that will let you know that you are giving attention to this part of your life? Feeling joy. Feeling joy. Laughter. Laughter. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. What else? Me time. Me time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that you are worth it, you deserve it, and then in fact, playtime is what allows you to refill the reservoir. I mean, if you pour it all out of a pitcher and there are no drops left, there's nothing left to give. But the playtime allows you to restore, to recreate yourself, to get back to that space of giggling and having joy even when there's stuff going on. I love to design. That's a, a form of play to me, to yeah. see, change things around in the house and make a whole different look. 
No, and then see the looks on the on the face of the family when they walk in. Wow. Yeah, I love to see that. So that's a snapshot of what we're going to work with now on the nine domains. Your first job is to look at each of those nine domains. And Sherry, I want you to do it too. I know you did it not more than three months ago. Yes, I want to. I was put a date on interacting with Good. the virtual community, but Good. I will enjoy it. So write down the date because you can use this little page. Like, In fact, I'll give you blank ones if you want to be able to do it in the future. But use this page as a snapshot of a diary, and you can go, oh, on August 3rd, I remember what was going on. It was hard for me to even get there that day, and here's what's happened in the meantime. So it's, it's a nice little benchmark. This is just a snapshot of where you are today. So in, I want you to rank them from 1 to 10. You can't have any ties. I, what I found in my early days, it was easy to just go ahead and rank spirituality as number one and romance as number ten, and then fill in the blanks. Now, now there are some variations, you know. But however you do it, you can't have a tie. It's a forced choice. What? And you, you're the one who determines what your criteria is. Is it based on what's going on in my life financially? I don't care. But you have to rank them one through ten, uh, one through nine. One being the most important, or the, what's getting the most attention, or maybe what's getting the most energy. So, for instance, you have to tell me how to do this every time. So everything should be equal 100%. No, 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 no. That's part two. Okay. You're just ranking them one through nine. Gotcha. No ties. So for the virtual community, can you remind them of the, the domains that they are filling out and the rankings that they need to do? Well, I just did, I think. We're, we're ranking the domains body, mind, spirituality, romance, family, community, money, career, and play. So if you didn't join us from the very beginning, I asked you to draw the shape of a pie, and you would have nine slices of the pie. And right in the center, instead of a chair, you're going to write your name. You're ranking body, mind, spirituality, romance, family, community, money, career, and play. One through nine, and one would be what's getting the most attention, the most energy, the most focus. Or maybe you're going to do it by looking in your checkbook and going, well, this is where all my money is going. That's clearly number one. However, you, whatever your criteria is, but you can't have a tie. It's one through nine. And Julie said, interesting. Would you like to unpack that a little bit? <laughs> well, I was looking at my numbers, and my first three, which you were saying are all connected, is the spirit, mind, and body. Right. And because they're all connected, that's why I said, that's just interesting. <laughs> because that's, that's, a, that's really, it's all, almost the same. It's a, it's a unit to pack those all. Sounds like you're in a healthy place. Mm -hmm. It well, is that okay? So I probably did it wrong. These are the so one being no, don't the, you, you okay. did it perfectly. Okay. However, you did it, it was perfect. Anybody else want to make comments about this particular aspect? I think it's interesting. I've done this three times, and I think it's interesting how each time it changes because life is a constant evolution. We're constantly changing, and we have to be open to that. And so this helps us reassess every time. Every time I do this with you, Shelly, and anyone that's online doing this, um, you 
it, it's life changing. And Richard and I did this together. And I want to share that story when you give me permission to do so because it, it really uh, was a very life changing thing. Great, we'll do that at the end of this. Thank you. So um, we're not getting any feedback from our virtual audience, so I think we should, we are. Well, the chat line is actually not up, but the social stream is. Okay. So we have viewers, which is not able to chat okay. with them right at this moment. No problem. Reason. Well, hopefully we're giving you what you need in, in, to move ahead, because the second part, the second exercise, if you will, is to look at each of these life domains as they are a standalone entity. And you're going to give yourself a grade of 0% to 100%. 0% is it's the pits. It couldn't possibly be any better. 100% is it's perfect. I can't imagine how it would get any better than this. So they don't all add up to 100%. Every one has its own score. So you get to be the teacher and the student simultaneously. Be honest. Remember, tell your truth quicker faster. So it doesn't have to equal 100%. It doesn't equal, unless they're all 100% divided by 9. Uh -huh. Gotcha. But it's their own standalone grade. Okay. Not compare to the other countries, just looking at it with. I was working online. And multitasking yeah. will get you every time. This is, it's been a while since I've done this. That's time. <laughs> <laughs> Good feedback. Must Thank be, you. Uh, must be the reason why I'm here. <laughs> well, one reason. <clears throat> So how many people had 100% in one domain? Two. Mm -hmm. Good. Good for you. Big round of applause <laughs> for Elizabeth. I have been doing this since 1991. And I was going through a really nasty divorce. And uh, back then, I don't think I had any 100%. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six today. Six out of nine. But, but you know what? Next week, it may be two 100%. I can, I can usually count on spirituality, romance, not always family, but I talked to my brother yesterday, and I'm going to see my mom right after I leave. Unless Julie's following me home. 100% uh, community because I consider this community and I love, this makes my heart sing. You know, to be able to have friends who are gathered together who go, I want to do this work. And, uh, and it is work, but it's fun work. So for me, it's a combination. Yeah. It's, it goes in your play category it does, as well it as does. your career. <laughs> so anyway, um, what, what was that like, Nita, for you having? been a while since you visited this particular exercise. Well, it was interesting. <laughs> You're not going to say anything else? I, mean, give us one I will say that I have no 100%, so I'm going, okay, am I just an overachiever forever, and I'm never going to reach 100% in any of these domains, or is it something that I, I mean, I'm just, I feel like I'm always growing at something. So, That's good. To get 100% and anything would mean that it's not perfect. Stopped growing. It's not perfect. Now, well, you then you've forgotten what we do in the third step. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. But anybody else on the grading? Did you find that difficult or easy or an aha or 
Depressing. <laughs> oh, well, let's see if we can help you move oh, through that. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm ready. There we go. For those of us who had 100%, what you're going to do is you're going to write down one thing in the coming week that could keep you at 100%. Because, of course, nothing stays the same. I and mean, we know that from observing the planet Earth. We're all in motion. We're, we're, we're growing or we're dying. Sometimes we're doing both. Um, so that's for everybody. It's really everybody's assignment. But the point is, just because you have 100% doesn't mean you don't write down something in that domain because you got to do something to maintain it. Or you can think outside of the box and say, what could make it even better? I mean, I thought I was at 100, but, you know, nothing's perfect. So, so what can I do to make it even better? So that's your job. And this will probably take more time than any of the sections we've done. I'll probably hear some giggles and groans. But I want you to write down in, in the body domain what would get me closer to 100%. Doesn't mean you're making a commitment to do it. Break it down into manageable bite-sized pieces. So if I, I can go back to that whole weight thing. You know, I gained five pounds on the cruise. Would it be healthy for me to say, okay, I've been back for a week. I'm going to go ahead and lose all five pounds this week. Would that be a balanced, healthy thing to say? Unreasonable. No, unreasonable. What would be something I could do? Refocus. Refocus. But behaviorally, I could say, okay, I'm going to cut out sugar and flour for this week, or I'm going to give up desserts this week, or I'm not going to drink wine this week, or whatever. So unpack it and make it really manageable for you to be able to do it. Only one thing. One thing, that's right. I don't want you oh, to be overwhelmed because you've got nine categories here. <clears throat> so it's one thing in each category. Correct. One oh, thing okay. in each category. Body, mind, spirituality, etc. For the virtual audience, there again, body, mind, spirituality, romance, family, community, money, career, and late. people still writing so we're not quite through here.
And I'm going to assume that our virtual audience is still working too. Boy, Elizabeth has done everything. She's such a great student. <laughs> Very detailed. That's where I get that side of her. Okay. So what did you discover about yourself in this process? It's really a goal setting process, isn't it? Yes. But I've always been taught, my dad was also a minister. And I have always been taught God, family, and job. Mm -hmm. uh, so of course spirituality is first and it continued that I have to set. I had to do my daily Bible study and prayer and church. Daily Bible study, prayer, and church. That will keep you at 100%. Absolutely. Well, let's go through, if you're willing, sometimes when I ask people to share, and it, you don't have to do it in every domain, but sometimes it will give other people an idea, and they go, I like that idea better. I'm going to use that one. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and throw mine out there. In the body domain, I've already said, I have these five pounds to lose. And so I have already started this week, but I will continue until I get this weight off if you have enough of the sugar and the flour. I'm going to give myself an escape clause for one day. <laughs> Try gluten-free flour. Gluten-free flour. Mm -hmm. I think that will help. Get, uh, is it Betty Crocker? Yeah. Well, I'm, but this quick. This quick. Betty Crocker okay. okay. has a case. And I use I'm that. not doing a case. I, I <laughs> use the Bisquix gluten free because my husband has celiac, so he has to have gluten free. And it's fabulous. It's better to me. But it's just regular flour. Well, what I'm trying to do is just give up essentially every, anything white that's going to, yeah. until I need just get it off. But then I, that's a great the idea. Gluten is I may have, have it. So anybody else in the body domain that you want to throw out on the table? Sure. No donuts for a week. No donuts for a week. <laughs> no donut at that church. Would, that, that, would, that would fill in my head. I'm giving a more <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, well, I'm going to ride my new bike again. That's a sight in itself. But okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have a burning share in the body domain? <laughs> I just put increasing water. Okay. I don't even what are you going to increase it to? You're going to add eight ounces a day. I mean, no, I think four. Okay, four so glasses. So four glasses. So you're going to, How are you going to do that? Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking you to is because now I've, I've. Well, yes, and if you don't measure it, you can't count it. You can't master it. So, uh, and what are you doing now? Are you doing two glasses a day? Okay. So let's assume you're doing two. Oh, I'm trying to double my water intake. There you go. Essentially. There you go. <laughs> but I'm going to suggest that, you know, if it's a goal, if you're going to really hold yourself accountable for it, write it down and count it. You know, maybe you just put a little tick mark every time you, you could, you could, you could carry this around with you for a week and go, okay, I did my eight ounces today, or check off one cup of time, whatever. Let's move to the mind domain. Just to show you how my mind's working, I wrote down three things. But I, I settled on one that could actually work for two. And it's to play Scrabble with my mom. Oh, that's, that's play, that's family, and that's mind. So I just want to introduce that concept that you can write it down in one and you get a two for Anybody else in the mind domain? Just make sure you scratch it down something extra. <laughs> I want to write at least one blog. You would have been so proud last week. I wrote three. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sherry! Okay, one blog. That's one of the three things I wrote down. Write a blog about today. Is this just... Love it. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I actually should. wrote down um, going walking, just adding that back to the temperature changing. Uh -huh. Because for me, one, of course, that's body. But for me, that's also just kind of cleansing what's in the head and the kid noise and the work things. It just clears my thoughts. So I'm trying to make sure that I do that to myself every day, is having a moment just to clear my thoughts, listen to the birds. So it's the body, but it's also that just reflection of quiet time. This was a morning that I didn't get to walk. Thursday is usually the morning I don't get to walk. I try to walk by 4 to 6 in the morning. I just didn't walk today. And... 
That's because my husband wants to have coffee and read the newspaper before he walks. He'll usually join me at the end and then he'll keep going. He walks twice as much as I do. And I missed it because that's my prayer time. Before John joins me, that's my prayer time. So I'm out there doing all that you're saying. I'm clearing my mind. I'm trying to get I hear you. Anybody else in the mind, Jimmy? I do a lot of reading. I said a lot. I take some new time to do reading because it keeps my mind. I'm not, I'm, I'm where that book is, not there, where my stress is. Right, good for you. Mm -hmm. right. So reading, do you read every day? I do. So what did you write in the mind domain that you're going to get you closer? Read more. <laughs> <laughs> so reading a chapter, read two. Exactly. Again, it's up to you, but I'm asking you to share mm -hmm. so that we can go, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Spirituality. I have it at 100%, even though it's ranked number four. But one of the things I love to do, and, and I know Sherry and Anita have both heard me say this before, I'm going to invite a friend to church. Mm -hmm. So I, I've you said that. We yeah, I, I, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. So at, at this meeting, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Meeting like this. That's yeah. right. She ended up with another one, but boy, she just lit up the place when she showed up, and it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. so, what do you have in spirituality that's either going to get you closer to 100% in the coming week or keep you at 100%? Anybody else? Okay, I guess that's one we don't want to talk about. Let's move on to romance. Um, one of the things that's really one we don't want to talk about. Well, I want to talk about it because even though mine's at 100%, there's something that happened this morning that didn't create an argument, but it was, I, I, I think there's something to see about that. I got in the car. We, we were having some housework done. We had a little storm damage, and so right now there's not room in the garage for two cars because we're getting ready for some repair work to be done. My car was in the garage. John's was parked in the driveway. I opened the garage door. I can't get out. John's on his walk. So I'm dressed like this in my high heels and I start walk, stalking, no, walking in the <laughs> to find my husband so I can get out to be to the B&I meeting on time. So I'm taking John's card. Tell him how much I appreciate it. I didn't fuss at him, but he knew that I wasn't happy. <laughs> so is there no spare key that you could have moved his car? It was in his pocket. No spare car. Okay. To tell you the truth, I didn't think of that. Okay. I looked for the key. <laughs> I didn't look for the That's right. It was probably the trunk of oh. the car. But at any rate, whatever it was. So for me, I'm at 100% with romance. But every once in a while, even when there hasn't been something test testy that's happened, I'll usually say something sweet for John. Well, and I'll, I'll share with that. So mine for romance that we've had six children. My husband's been traveling all week. So he's home today, the kids are well, they're at school, we all get home, and when they go to bed, I just want to be able to talk with my husband. So I want the, it's not about kids, it's not about, it's just kind of, okay, how, how are things? So sometimes it isn't romance as we think about romance, it is truly just having a moment to connect during the week with your husband if everything is so busy and hectic and chaotic and all of that. That's very so that's true. all it was, it's a simple thing, I just put talking to him. When it says to him, you are important, this is you time. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the same time, it's you time. Okay, that's <laughs> right, that's right. Good, good. Anybody else? Romance? Okay. Yes, Beverly. Cool. So I'm going to create our candles. Oh, oh we think of woo, woo. Yeah, I'm Woo, woo. Yeah, too. What about you, Elizabeth? I also like candles. Oh, the three <laughs> candle lighters over here. Woo. <laughs> I'll be sending right them. Right at my world. I was going to say, after 48 years of romance, married romance, um, <clears throat> we, of course, we have the Antoinette syndrome, but uh, I think I only put down 75% because we need to spend more quality time. We're, we're together a lot on the road. We travel with the ministry. But to just sit down and just, you know, just talk. That's nice. We need to do some of that. Well, you know, when we, before children, my husband and I would go walking together every day. We would hold hands and talk, yeah. and sometimes it was the best time we had the best conversations. 
were on our walk, when the, when the kids were infants and pushing in strollers, we were still able to just have great conversations. And now, who wants mommy to push them in a the stroller? They want to be kicking a soccer ball. So that was our time to be able to connect, to have quality. It was just our walks. So, you know, that's why I think I'm missing that. Yeah, it's, 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 mm-hmm. that's that's great. Somehow get that back. great. Well, you could take an extra one of these. You can go through I think the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> interesting to see what he thinks <laughs> this way. It's very interesting. Well, in the family domain, I put down go see mom after this. But again, I'm going to have to say, if Julie's going to follow me home, I'll, I'll create that time. But I'm definitely going to definitely gonna play Scrabble with mom. And I, I could have, I could make times to do that. I have. If mom's up for it, I'd like to just spend at least an hour or two a week with you oh, over lunch or whatever your choice is. That time, so it's very nice. She, I, it sounds to me like she receives that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else in the family domain? She's okay. calling. Our family lives all in other states, so not near. So just connecting is what we need. Just connecting. Good. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> this Saturday, I started moving back in with a temporarily very short term. Um, is that in writing? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> in my husband's mind, yes, it is. <laughs> and so I'm definitely going to play Scrabble because he, wherever he is, it's his girl thing. Mm-hmm. And we, I've really been missing both of them. So we're going to play Scrabble. Is that we'll, we'll, we'll because play. nobody in the family will play games with me because they all sound too competitive. That you sound just like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I deny it. I just want to have fun and I encourage everybody else. What's wrong with that? There you go. You're an encourager. That's right. Yes, I am. <laughs> Anybody else in the family domain? Give some ideas to our folks out in, in virtual reality land? No? Okay. Well, then let's move on to community. I have finished this class. Is that a cop out? I can check that one off my list as soon as we get through. <laughs> and I'm having a blast, in case you can't tell. Okay, who else in the family in the community? Um, just make phone calls. I mean, I I miss everybody works and I am at home mm-hmm. and so people are not available that you know always you would see in the church. And so I just want to be take calls, they have to do it. Instead of a coffee day, hopefully. Yay. Yeah. Anybody else in the community? I would like to meet the new neighbors mm. and um, on a sidebar uh, attend a networking event at Grand Lake City that's taking place next week with one of our members. Okay. Is it a business thing? It is. You get a two for them. It is. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. <laughs> Urban Workspace down for me. So me. I saw that in the paper and I heard you mention it yesterday. We may have to go together. I love it. <clears throat> What about the money domain? Mm -hmm. I'm there. You're there? Okay, speak to us. Well, I'm there, meaning that I need to vamp that up, ramp that up, and that's why um, one of the reasons why I need it is um, the business advisor, because she is giving me tips on uh, how to work toward that and still maintain my values of promoting others and Mm -hmm. providing exposure for other people. So what's your thing that you're going to do in the coming week? Why did I quit? Attend the networking event. Okay, there's a briefer. Okay. Anybody else in the money domain? I have re-budget. I really need to re-budget my personal business. Because things change. Things do. And so I'm at a point where some things have changed where I've got to go back and rethink and set new goals and make sure I'm still in sync with I'm the most happy with my husband has recently had to retire from the work. Not from the industry, but from the public. No. And so we have no choice but to get a budget. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we're going to continue with that. Good. Okay. Good. I, I have two things actually. You can only tell one. Only one. Okay. Oh. Um, I wrote the one. Uh, I'm going to take photos, make sure I have current quality photos of all my jewelry pieces. And post them on Etsy.com. It's only 20 cents per item. Good for you. I'm so proud of you. Right. I just right. got my and you need to send out an email to everybody at the OCI. 
not just in the community, but is there a way to individually? You, you can send it to me, and I can okay. send it to the entire Oh, that'd be great. Okay. I think that's great. Perfect. And the way for you to be able to do that is the more friends you get on your profile, just like with Facebook or any of those, then you can send out your own email, and it goes out to your friends. So if you have 10 friends, it's going to go to 10 friends, or right. 300 friends. Got it. Okay, and last but not least, my favorite, drum roll please, Play Domain. Play. And I put down, I, did we skip career? We did. Yes. Let's go back to career. Okay. I have a, a new client that's getting ready to come on board, so I need to schedule a meeting with a new client. Yes. Nice. I'm going to play and play because I'm going to be making beautiful, incredible play pendants. And components for networks. So that's career and play together. I did it. All righty <laughs> then. You go, girl. Anybody else? Finish my class book. <laughs> in the coming week? Well, no. No. Not. Then what are you going to do in the coming the, week? The coming week. I need to write another chapter. <laughs> write a chapter. Yeah. There you go. See, it's why it's good to have an account. Yeah. What else? Anybody else? Career? I'm going to follow up with past clients. See how the is doing. So a lot of times that just leads to more business. Absolutely, wise woman. Okay, and, she, and you're going to close your new prospect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then anybody else in the career domain? Add work or not? Well, let's just stick with one per person for time. Meet with Nita. Meet with Nita. There you go. <laughs> and now we can do the play domain. I am going to have a a three for here. Because I'm going to propose that this Friday night, instead of picking up Luta, this is her first week back at school, and my husband's first week back at school at the university, that we go see Casablanca at the outdoor camp and then go to the cheese. My one day of the week that I get to cheat, we're going to go to the cheesecake place that she's been telling me about. That's what I'm proposing. They may vote me down, but that's my thing. Go to Casablanca at the Orpheum on Friday. So that hits romance, family, and play. <laughs> Hmm. Mine is um, to dance with my boys. Ooh, how fun! They love to dance, and I love music, and I think it lifts us up. And so we dance, and we just haven't done it this week. So we what age are they? Three. So do you do that? Is like the three of you together, or will you do separate dance? We just get up and dance. Oh, how fun! Really? They get the guitar. So that's what we're going to do. Awesome. Okay, everybody has to share in the play domain. No resistors here. Okay, play. Wow. Oh, I'm a 10% and I didn't even write any sentences. <gasps> well, you can Ooh. listen to the ideas. Elizabeth, okay. what do you have now? Well, I have uh, spend more time together, uh, more free time, but I also am going to play study with my daughter. Alrighty then. <laughs> okay, good. I'm going to play Scrabble. Today or this week? Sunday, our son moved in. Alrighty so then. We're going to play Scrabble today. Yay! Well, I think Mom and I are going to be playing on Sunday too, so hey. Come up with any good words. Text me. <laughs> oh, I'm good at words. Nita? I'm going to plant some flowers. Wow. Reorganize things inside, and I have some empty pots on the outside. And someone gave me a so it's wow. not going to cost me money to go get some plants and dirt and plant Fantastic! Dirt. Yay! All right. Well, we've all got something in the play domain. What did you write down, Sherry? I wrote down decorate, and what that means is um, Sarah, our twenty-four-year-old, has a birthday. Ooh. And her area, her apartment downstairs, is not yet done. And so I would like to go in and try her birthday Sunday and work down there and try to make it special for her. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. Okay. Well, so what we've looked at today is these nine domains of body, mind, spirituality, romance, family, community, money, career, and play. And we've taken a snapshot of where we are today. We've, we've ranked them one through nine, whatever criteria you use to determine what's number one. 
what's number nine. And as you've probably seen, just because it's a low ranking doesn't mean that it's a lower percentage. It just means that right now, for instance, for me, career was number eight, but it's at 100%. So they're not necessarily related, but it's good to just take a look at where it is. And then finally, not finally, we gave ourselves a score in each of those. And we had some 100% in the room, but even when you have 100%, you need to do things to maintain that right? okay. And then finally, we decided what was an action step that was healthy and in the, in the spirit of being in balance. What could we do in the coming week that would either get us closer to 100% in each of those domains or keep us at 100% if we're already there? We had some great ideas that were shared with one another and with our virtual audience, which we can't communicate today. And um, you've now, in essence, you're able to walk away with nine different goals. Now, if you haven't been able to quantify them, that is, make them smart goals that are, that are specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound, we can talk about that later, but that's how you're going to be able to know that you've achieved what you said you want to achieve. I promised that I wasn't going to hold you accountable, but I challenge you to have an accountability partner who can. For instance, Elizabeth, you may not want your husband to do it because some of those things that you talked about, you know, involve him. But Sherry's here. I mean, she knows what you've said. You know what she said. That might be something that you could, you could decide. That's right. That's right. So... We, we have, each have now nine goals that we can do in the coming week if we choose to that will help us achieve a more balanced life. Now, the one thing that Sherry asked me to do was just kind of mention, since we the first three modules of Living on Purpose are integrity-based communications, and I ran through those six behaviors real quickly, and i got to ask you, honestly, you don't have to answer, but did you, looking back at what you've written on your paper, did you tell your truth? quicker, faster? Did you ask for what you want when it came to the goal setting? Did you ask yourself questions that would allow you to, you know, give yourself an assessment that really was meaningful? So if you look back a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, you can go, hmm, you know, I was really in a better place than I thought I was. Or did you, did you pay attention to what those inner questions were prompting? And finally, are you really ready to keep your agreements to yourself? You haven't told anybody else you're going to do it except here in the room. And are you willing to hold yourself accountable and not make excuses and say, well, that was a fun exercise that I didn't want to do. You know, that, that puts it back in a victim role. Mm -hmm. So the third of the, uh, or the second of the, this is the third domain of living on purpose. But the second one is a values clarification exercise. And it allows you to look at what's most important to you in your life in a particular relationship. And we don't have time to do that today with a person, but I do want to suggest that you look at the things that you've written down here and ignore the percentages, ignore the rankings, and instead say, of all of the nine things that I've written down, what are the most important things to me right now? What's the best possible use of my time, my energy, my creativity, and my finances. You know, what if I want to if I want to accomplish all nine of these, what's the one that I want to do first? Some of us wrote down things that had to be done by Friday, or for me, that had to be done by today. So I want to challenge you to do that and perhaps when we come back together next time we can actually take everyone through that values clarification exercise in relation to a particular relationship, whether it's your relationship with yourself, your relationship with God, your relationship with your romantic partner. Sometimes people will choose to do it with a best friend or a business partner. I've seen that done before. And it really clears things up. And you said that you would share your experience, <coughs> yes. and you wanted to share your experience. And so I would like to ask you to do that um, in, in the context of you and Richard coming to live on Yes. Well, it was a, a two-day seminar. So that you can get on that. Uh, sure. It was a two-day seminar, and um, it was during a very hectic time in our life. Um, I may need to change chairs with you. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. And um, 
we took time out because both of us, my husband just really has a lot of respect for Shelly Goddard. And um, I respect my husband and respect Shelly. So I said, okay, let's go. <laughs> and uh, Shelly really encouraged us to come as well. And this was at our home, so it created a very intimate atmosphere um, where we were able to open up and feel safe. And that's very important as well. And so this living on purpose, we went expecting to walk away with a lot of information, but not really knowing that it was going to be a life-changing moment. And once we got into the inner introspective moment of sitting together and having our breakout sessions where Richard and I would talk about, okay, what are we doing in this situation? Things started coming up that we hadn't even considered. And one was that our daughter was very ill and um, needed a place to live. She had her home, but she was not able to care for herself. Our home was too small and we felt we hadn't discussed it. We just felt there's no room here. We we had a two bedroom home and four people, so um, there's no room. And so we needed to going to Shelly um, and her home and the living on purpose. It drove us to the point to where we had to look at that and say, what can we do? Not we can't do anything because we're not able to. And then we had to look at the fact that our son in middle school was going into a new school that was not a good school district. And we had options, but our options were either send him to a, a not so good school or send him to a Florida to be with his father. Well, either one of those were options that I was willing to uh, take or, cho or choose. And so we had to look at that. And so we had the raw truth in front of us now about our son, about our daughter, well, what is it that we need to do? So when we left Shelly Bowers, we immediately started brainstorming, and within one week, we had found a new home, put our house up for sale. <laughs> I mean, it, the ball just started rolling, and I will say, Shelly, that had it not been for that, I think that we would have had it in the back of our mind we need to do something, but we wouldn't have been pushed to have to act on it immediately because uh, we just hadn't really thought about it so much. And... It, it was life-changing. And isn't it interesting that the perfect home just happened to be there <laughs> yes. once you put it out there? Yes. That week I'm online and I'm, I'm looking. We didn't even make it to the second session. We called in and gave our testimonial. <laughs> because by the time the end of the week hit, we had a new home. We were moving. I mean, the, this thing had really uh, just snowballed. But I got online, and I, I believe that God leads us because I was on there just looking for a home. Not in Mississippi. Uh, looking for a home in Midtown or somewhere in Memphis in a good school district that would also be large enough for our daughter to come. And I happened to fall on a Craigslist listing in... <laughs> Lake Cormorant, Mississippi. Uh, my husband says to me, I don't want to move to Mississippi. I said, okay, I don't either, but can we go look at the house? Well, the house was absolutely perfect. It has a separate apartment for Sarah, so she keeps her, her identity and her independence, um, and it was in a fabulous school district, and so it just fell into place, and I attribute God, number one, but I know that God put Shelly into our lives. And so we were able to go to that event, and it, it made a huge difference. I encourage anyone watching, anyone here, to it's worth the investment um, to go to Shelley's events, the Living on Purpose events. It's fabulous. Thank you. Gosh, now I've got a testimony on the video, <laughs> don't I? So what I'm going to suggest in the time that we have left, it's now 10.30, Beverly tells me, and we said that we would wrap up by 11, as mm -hmm. I recall, right. and then we can stay for some open networking after that if you want to, those of us who are here live. I, I'd like to just open the conversation for, you know, uh, anything that you've got on your mind, but staying focused if we can on this whole balance issue, or if you want to talk about, about more about the values clarification or the integrity-based communications, we can do that, but let's just throw it open so that we can um, share what you want. I really like the idea of a accountability partner, and I have one, but we don't really see each other talk very much, 
and I, I want to get that going more, um, more frequently. I bet that was one of the things you wrote down that you wanted to share for your second goal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes <they will. laughs> I mean, seriously, if you yeah. want it, you've already articulated it. You know, like you want ask, to ask. And even if you only get to do it by phone, I can tell you my mastermind group, both of them, meet by phone once a week, but quarterly we get together in person. So we can still do a lot of accountability work, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, even if it's by phone. So, okay. yeah, great, great. Thank you. And I just went to a mastermind group with you that is a part of NAVO. And uh, you and Nita are heavily involved. Former president, correct? Right. Nita Black. Former president. Former president, <laughs> Shelley Bauer, okay. And it that alone was just amazing. It was a very small group, small net group like what we have today. Uh, but it, it just is an incredible concept. And I believe it's built on accountability, isn't it? That mm -hmm. concept. Speaking of. It's actually I, more fundamentally, it's built on being in a group of like-minded people okay. who, have, who have a spirit of encouragement, generosity, openness, authenticity, mm -hmm. because there's no room in a mastermind group for someone to say, who do you think you are? Right. You know, or mm -hmm. poo-pooing an idea or whatever. It's, it's people who sure. really got to have the heart to mm -hmm. want to give and to be authentic. And, yeah. and sometimes what's going on requires some empathy, not mm -hmm. necessarily sympathy, but empathy, because yeah. we've all been in bad places. Those bad mm -hmm. times are what you know, mm -hmm. makes us stronger. So it's, sure. it's not that accountability isn't a big piece of it, but I would have to say a spirit of, um, what would you say, a, a spirit of support. Transparency. Transparency mm -hmm. and like-mindedness. I mean, you, you'll know if it's not time to be, if it's time yes. to leave that group. That's sure. more important than mm -hmm. whether you hold each other or general. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. so I would say that, yeah, and I would say the value of trust. Yeah, trusting each other and being uh, open in a confidential network, small yes. confidential network. And I think, Shelly, you're part of a mastermind that is more spiritual and, and faith-based. And then the Nalbo uh, mastermind carries over some of that, but is more focused on uh, business objectives and assuring sure. success in the business. Sure. And so before we, we wrap up yeah. at the end of, of this session, I'd like you to talk a little bit about the event that's coming up. Okay. 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 Great. Great. All right. So we're talking about <clears throat> what? Well, you know, what are your takeaways? What are your ahas? Where would you like to go deeper? You know, we've got 30 minutes that we can have conversation here that the virtual audience can yes. also benefit from. Is there anything that you'd like to ask about or comment on? Well, when you say values clarification. Um, I, I feel very strong in my values, and again, I, I could relate to what you were saying because it took me many years to really discover, okay, I'm a grown-up now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm almost 43 years old, So, and being able to articulate values. Um, so how does someone maybe accelerate that process? Well... You know, this, this applies to not only values clarification, but everything in life. I have become a huge fan because of my personal experience with mentoring and, and being mentored. Mm -hmm. And I think my early mentors, even though I knew that's what they were doing, I didn't have the vocabulary for it. I didn't have the language for it. So what I would encourage people here and on, in virtual audience to do is, if there's some area, particularly after looking at this life balance thing, if there's some area in your life where you are suffering, look to the people you know in your life. And it's not that it has to be a long-term commitment. For instance, if I were suffering in the spirituality area, I know who I can reach out to and say, you know, I'm in a hard place right now. I mean, I'm still going to church. I'm still you know, reading my Bible, I'm still doing the things that used to work, but right now it's like nobody's there, to, to help you, to be your companion on the journey. By the same token, you know, for someone out there who may have lost a job or they're struggling with a career transition issue, talk to someone who has done it before successfully and is back out in the light, who can give you the, the strength and the courage and the, and the hope, you know, that the light is not an oncoming train, that it really is 
got to open up into something better. In the romance, let me tell you, you've got some people right here in the room who have said no more. And yet, you know, John and I call ourselves Poster Kids for Hope because we yeah. met each other late in life and it's just amazing. It seems like you've been together forever. Like, even in pictures, you can tell that you all are so connected and you've been married how long now? 13 years in November. Oh, 13 years. So that's my a testimony. Best, my best friend, <laughs> my, my companion, my everything. So, not my everything. But we know what our everything is, and we have that in common. So, um, so that's what I would suggest. And to come back when we do the values clarification exercise, by all means, yes. well, I'll actually, if I had them with me today, I would hold it up, and I'd give you a cheat yes. sheet of values that you want to move toward in your life, or that you want to make sure, even if it's like this, if, even if you're already at 100%, mm -hmm. you need to do things to stay there. So. Psychologists say that we, we do things for two reasons, either to gain pleasure or to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. And the moving toward is what living on purpose is all about. It's not, I mean, for many years I went, not this, not that, not this, not that. And now I can say, this is it. And this is, like I said earlier, I know when I'm not in joy. I know when I'm not connected. And that's my life purpose, is to be connected to, to the divine and everyone. And so it's like the light switch. If it's turned off, it's dark. And I know exactly what I need to go back over there and turn the light back on. So I I would suggest inviting you to come back at another time, and I'll give you the tools that you need so that yes. after you've been through it one time in, in the relationship of your choice, you can apply it in every area of your life. And we are going to be doing that particular session on the next week. Thursday, so we will we'll let all of you know um, when that will be happening um, once we get that set. But okay. Fifth Thursday, we will have clarification of values. The next Fifth Thursday, we'll have what's the next segment? We'll talk about that later. Okay, you and I will decide. What's all right, the best next all segment right. that works live and online. Okay. So the the takeaway there is you don't have to wait until you come right. to this session. You can reach out to people in each of these life domains. And like my dad saying, you know, it wasn't about learning how to play again. I never did it. If you know someone who knows how to play, say, you know what, you seem to have play down path. And I just went through this exercise and realized that there's no play in my life. Will you teach me how to play? <laughs> well, they'll, they'll think you're outrageous, but they'll probably be highly complimented uh -huh. and say, heavens yes, what are the areas you're interested in? Right, right. So, Thank you for asking the question. Yes, absolutely. And so the, the thing I think people need to understand is how valuable what you're bringing to the table is. Normally, 297 for a two-day session. And we're breaking it up into fifth Thursdays for only twenty dollars a head. And so um, it, it just it means so much that you're here. Now I would like for everyone around the table to be able to just ask questions of Shelly. Uh, what what is it that's on your mind right now? I have a question. So we came up with our nine goals today, essentially nine different goals. But I know from my own profession that people will get big picture of things, nine goals, things you're thinking you're going to do can seem overwhelming. So how do you balance or make important goals and not feel like, well, I have to work on this and this and this and this, everything needs to come back. You know, I know that, that looking at big pictures sometimes becomes overwhelming. So how do you accomplish that? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because we can actually very quickly do that in a, in a clarification, a values clarification way. What is most important to me in my relationship with these nine goals? So why don't you tell me what your nine goals are? I'm going to use you as an example. Julie. We're going to write them down right here on the paper, and then I'm going to take you through this exercise real quickly. So start with, let's say, start with the body. body. So we're talking about your goal, my specific goal. Mm -hmm. Your goal that you wrote down. Okay, so walk four days a week. And like I said, that was almost, that's kind of body and mind. Well, but what did you write down for mine? Um, put, I put the walk daily and then the body of the four bus walk. So I think I missed you. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> because they did overlap. For me. Yes, they do. So we're, we've got walk daily, four days a week, four glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. That's not four days a week. That's every day, right? Okay. And spirituality? I just put reflection, daily reflection. How much time? Um, 20 minutes. 
write. I didn't write a time, but I think. 20 yeah, but I'm going to make you make it a real goal. <laughs> okay, because a smart goal is one that's specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time bound. So, uh, romance. That was talking and sharing with my husband today. So that was a quick goal. That one I can do. <laughs> yeah, you can check that off by midnight. That one I can do. A couple of. Okay. Family. Um, family is connecting with a sister. By phone? By phone, yes. And I, I, I guess I should say, like, within two days, right? Because that doesn't okay. happen. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of my phone calls in the car. <laughs> Try to multiply. Well, sometimes when it's time bound, you said within a week, because that's really what we said, make it possible within a week. But something like this, if you just say reflection, that doesn't have any time no, to, I mean, right. um, no. community. Um, I could invite an neighborhood friend over. I was assuming this, this weekend being a free day. Okay, and money? I put less, I don't know how to make this up. But less unnecessary spends, little things the kids want and just go grab. It's that kind of little stuff that means nothing. Maybe it's a week of not. Um, or it could be when, it could be, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but it could be as someone says, I want this, I want that. You simply have the discipline of asking the question for a week, is this a want or a need? Or that's so like their evaluating. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just one tool. You just get your kids used to your saying, is this a want or a need? And they go, or sometimes, here's what I did when we paid our little neighbors to water our yard while we were on the cruise. I had them tell me what they thought it was worth when we got back. And we brought them t-shirts back and everything too. I was willing to pay more and, and it was interesting to see. And if they you know, the other side of that, and I told their mom I was going to do that because she homeschools them, so I was going to use it as a teaching thing. Uh, the brother dropped out, and I said, so do you think that, that I should pay you what your brother would have been paid so that mm -hmm. since you did all the work? I said, well, I don't know if I should do that. I mean, <laughs> anyway, but I was going to say, if you had hired me to do that, would you have paid me that? So, you know, it just those little questions can really be important, but it's to evaluate money spent. However you choose to do it. You got a lot of you got a lot of uh, options there. Career. Following up with past clients. And how are you gonna do that in the email? Email. Okay. send them an email this week? So every client is gonna get an email, an email this week. How many clients are there? Well, you've had one a day for the last year, so. <laughs> well, you know, some clients they work multiple times a week with, so it, it's not really amounts to that. But it's probably, I would say, for this year, it's been about 12 continuous weekly clients. Okay, and then finally, the play domain. That's my dance with my boys oh, today. Yeah. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's the other one I can easily do and accomplish. Okay, so what I would do is walk through here, and I know what the answer to two of these is going to be. But what's more important to you in your relationship with balance today? Is it walking four days a week or drinking four glasses of water a day? If you had to choose between the two, okay? So what's more important to you in balance today, walking four days a week or reflecting 20 minutes a day? Okay, in your relationship with balance. Can I say one because that gives me the... I understand. Okay. okay. It's it's, a, you don't have to qualify okay. it. Well, I guess I'm saying it out loud to my head. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Walking. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what's more important to you in the context of balance today, walking four days a week or talking and sharing with your husband? Talking and sharing. Okay. So that now becomes number one. Right. What's more important to you in balance? Talking and sharing with your husband or connecting with your sister by phone? Talking and sharing. Inviting a neighborhood friend over. Talking and sharing. Um, evaluating you spending money. Okay. So well, I can go all the way around, right. which is what I would normally do in these values, but we know that's number one. So I don't have to prepare that anymore. Okay.
Okay, so what's more important today? Let's go back to walking. You were walking four days a week or connecting with your sister by phone in two days. Okay, what's more important, walking or inviting your neighborhood friend over? Friend, okay. What's more important to you in terms of balance? In the snapshot today, inviting a friend over or evaluating how you're going to spend your time. Okay, what's more important, inviting a friend or following up my email with all 12 of the comments? That's hard <laughs> friend. Okay, what's more important, your friend or dancing with the boys today? Boys dancing. <laughs> so, but we're, can we just right. know no, that that's, that's number two? That's See, I knew that you were going to do that based on what you said because these are really, these are specific time sense. They're today. Mm -hmm. Husband and boys today. So, we now know what number one and number two is. Let's go back here to inviting a friend. Is it inviting a friend or following up by email? Inviting a friend or walking four days a week? Okay, walking or four glasses of water? Walking or reflection? Okay, walking or connecting with the sister? Walking or evaluating how you spend your money? Oops, I skipped a friend. I skipped a friend. <laughs> now I'm not, I don't know anymore. Um, walking or um, friend. Okay. All right, so friend or email to your clients? Friend or walking four days a week? Friend or four glasses of water a day. Friend, friend or reflection. <laughs> reflection or connecting with your sister. Connecting with your sister or a neighborhood friend over. Connecting with your sister or following up by email. I know, I, I know that sounds bizarre. <laughs> Following up by email or walking four days a week? Walking four days a week. Walking four days a week or four glasses of water a day? Walking four days a week. Walking four days a week or reflecting daily? Walking four days. Walking four days a week or connecting with your sister? Walking four days a week or inviting a neighborhood? Neighborhood friend over or follow up by email. Neighborhood friend or walking four days a week. Well, see, what is a neighborhood I know, okay, but you got to choose. Um, In other words, right. if you want to walk four days a week. You could, if, if the neighborhood friends were over, that, that's not seven days a week. That, you may go, I'm going to give up walking on Friday because I want the parade over. Okay. Friend or four glasses of water. <laughs> friend. This is not a friend or reflection. Uh, friend. Friend or connecting with your sister. Friend. Okay. We got a number three. Now see okay, how that happens. Don't let it put you <laughs> off if you've got a friend helping you through this and you do the same thing because it takes a lot. It's like when you answer the question, you're really asking yourself questions that aren't even on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. right. My it's head is sitting there going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But you, yeah. But it's not either it's or. You can right. have both and. Yeah. Because you can skip the water the day, or skip the walk the day that the friend's coming over. Like me, I had to give it up. I always yeah. give up walking on Thursday mornings. So, all right, so let's move on. Following up by email with your clients or walking four days a week? There's someone related to me. Um, Remember, well, I come before my career at any point, so walking four days a week. Okay, four days a week or four glasses of water? Four days a week. Four days a week or reflection daily? Four days a week. Four days a week or connecting with your sister? Four days a week. Four days a week or following up by email? Four days a week. There you go. See, I made you look at that one again, didn't I? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's, the, that's that mind, body, and spirit thing. The, right. the walking time. So I can do, if I do that, I'm better at all these, those other things. That's okay. why, in my mind, I put that ahead of me. Then let's go back. Four glasses of water or reflecting daily? You know what's coming up, so yeah. <laughs> maybe I should have done it the other way. Four glasses of water well, or following up by email. Reflection. So I think um, four glasses of water. Okay. Four glasses of water reflecting daily. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is my well, see, this may be where you do them both together. Well, you may be is. walking and reflecting. If it's I'm thinking time. if I'm walking and reflecting, then I need my water. So that's all okay. Well, let's see. Doing four glasses of water a day is easier than eat than than a lot of it is. You know, the email. If you do four glasses of water a day, you can drink the water while you're doing the email. So that's <laughs> what's going on in the background. Right. So, but I'm going to seem. You're going to do your walk and your reflecting at the same, same time, right? Yes. Okay. So, four glasses of water or connecting with your sister? Connecting with my sister. Connecting with your sister or following up or um, evaluating how you spend your money? Connecting with my sister. Connecting with your sister or following up by email? All right. So, she gets to be number five. Let's start over here just for kicks. Following up by email or reflection daily? The email. I'm sorry, I skipped this. Following up by email or four glasses of water? The email. Following up by email, that's it. Okay, yeah. it's number six. And that's because you were you pointed that out. It, it kind of it happens simultaneously. Yes. Okay. And then la uh, four glasses of water becomes number seven. What am I missing? The evaluate. Uh, oh, you yeah, evaluate spend. Spend money. Is it four glasses of water? Or the water. Water. And then that would be the last seven. We ended up without nine here because we because realized we got a twofer. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime you can do a twofer, you can go, I'm whoa, I can dance. play because I can dance with the boys while I'm, you know, <laughs> drinking my water or whatever. <laughs> I, I, it, which makes the goal seem achievable, doable. Right. And like I say, with my clients, with the work that I do, positive momentum. Right. Just Yes. You forward. A little so bit that's what you're doing. You so that's my water, I play. Yes, yes. And so you can turn this into a daily checklist that here are the items over here, mm -hmm. and here's the four days a week, you know, and it's done. You know, I get through here and I cross off, finish the seminar, and I buy the card for John, and I cross mm -hmm. off the romance. Not really, I never cross off the romance. <laughs> so the, on a day that you're going to dance with your kid, you can go and walk. Yeah, because she, the thing is, she made these very realistic. I mean, four glasses of water a day, she's already doing two. And if she tracks it, it's like, at four o'clock, I'm done. I don't even have to drink any more water. And with the four days a week of the walk, if she does four in a row, she may change her goal and decides that she's going to skip the day that she's inviting her neighbor over or that she's going to skip the day that she's, she has, she's a little bit behind on the emails to the clients. But then it lets you see I'm doing this. I'm on track. I mean, sometimes my win of the week is I walked every day for the last seven days. Yes, and I want everybody to celebrate that with me because we know that 21 makes tw takes 21 days to create a new habit. Well, guess what? You can break it quicker than that. I it's it's certainly faster for me to gain five pounds than it is to lose five pounds. So sometimes you just stop and celebrate. The little things that you're doing that get you back on track, and I'm sure you do that with your clients all the time. It's like, let's stop and celebrate that you got this box done, not that you didn't get the whole room done. All right, so does that help? So what we do is, in the values clarification, I just had you, we, we treated the goals like values, but the values clarification actually allows you to articulate what's most important to you in your relationship with on the line. And your relationship with me would get different answers than your relationship with your boys or your relationship with your husband. Mm -hmm. So, although there's usually a core value, integrity is always there for me. Right. But but it, it, the behavior may look different. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be married to someone who's not in love so faithful. But, you know, I might put up <laughs> with that on a, on a business friend who just, you know, dropped the ball. I know mm -hmm. I've dropped the ball. And I've been forgiven. But, um, anyway, that's that's what we'll do next time. With so please come back, everybody. So Nita, can you give us some elaboration on this or questions that you have, and also share with us about how the event comes up? Well, I was going to say that your book probably it it talks down a lot of this. So we were talking about the basic values. I think for me, um, and maybe for a lot of people, when when we're in crisis mode whatever reason, whether it's with your daughter or I had a daughter that I kind of went through some things and I began to seek answers. And so I think that's when you find some of these values or how to clarify values in your own life that you want to share with other people or that you, that are the foundation that you've got to rebuild in your own life and then share with other people. 
I saw your book, The Integrity Based Communications, is a good resource. And then there's some other books out there in terms of how do you make those values visible to those who care the most about, whether it's your spouse or children or whatever. So it would be, be an observation that um, you know, might help some other people. And if, and if I may, they can download the first two chapters of the book for free. All they have to do is go to www.integritybasedcommunications.com. It's got a little video there. People who have had the experience and uh, benefited from it. But also, you can just click, fill in your email address, and, and you'll get free PDF the first two chapters. So I'm not doing this to make money. <laughs> but thank you. Integritybased communications. Dot right. com. No, no hyphen. And I guess we're all human, and so when things are good, we maybe we don't seek the same things. You know, we, we you know when everything's good and everything's rocking along, it's right. it is maybe maybe we don't pray as much, or maybe we don't seek God's will in our life as much, and so we've got to get continue to be recentered in that. That divine will. Right. At least that's my belief. Mm -hmm. so, and anyway, the September, Very well said. the September 12th event is co-hosted. I'll just put that right there. It was, uh, I don't know if you can see yes, it, but it was, was uh, that little closer one. it's Wednesday, September the 12th. We should have between 150 and 200 professional women there. And it's geared towards women in business. Those um, who, or those who want to do business with women in business. Um, the event includes educational workshops, a luncheon, a keynote speaker, Angelique Ruhrs, a corporate agent, and she'll talk about how to connect with uh, large corporations and also some motivational and practical tips on running a business. So the, the uh, event is co-hosted by NAVO, which is National Association of Women Business Owners. There are about 70 chapters strong in the U.S. And uh, Crew Commercial Real Estate Women is another national organization, about the same number of chapters in the U.S. And then Webex South is another national nonprofit. Webex South represents the southeast part of the U.S. and, and they um, offer third-party certification for women in business, which has become more and more important for those women who want to do business with government and sure. What's the cost involved in that type of thing? So when we back south, I think it's around three hundred dollars for the initial uh, certification and then renewal is maybe something less than that. And on what's, an annual what's basis. involved in the certification? Is it an educational process? How lengthy that type of well, the certification is if you're 51 percent or more woman-owned, mm -hmm. and so the ownership of the company would be tested. You would prove up mm -hmm. that you are 51 percent or more woman-owned, right, and operating, and operating, and active in <coughs> management of the company. Okay. And then the certification includes a requirement for a business plan. Mm -hmm. So you submit your business plan. They do inspect where you from where you operate, so they'll come visit your office. And um, there's there are some other there there is some other information that's sure. included in their application. Okay, but those they are the allow, main. Do they allow home-based businesses to be certified, or do yes. they have to have them? Now, is that a part of the <coughs> Novo uh, membership? Novo and Webeck. The, the national certification is WeBink, and okay. WeBec is the, covers the southeast, mm -hmm. and WeBink and Novo are affiliated, <coughs> so we're okay. affiliated partners. Yes. Um, but one's a membership and one's a certification. And, okay. Right. okay, so there's separate fees for both. Yes, there are. Okay, and <coughs> what I'm posting this now, so what are the times, the starting time and ending time of the event on the 12th? On the 12th, registration is at 8 o'clock, and we do have about 25 tabletops, tabletop exhibits. Exhibitors set up is from 8 to 9. The breakfast, continental breakfast is from 8 to 9, and then the breakout sessions start at 9. Mm -hmm. 
the exhibit hall is from 11.15 to 12, with the luncheon starting at 12. And the event ends at 1.30. 1.30. And the uh, cost involved is the individual online registration is $49 before September 7th. So it's $49 up until September the 7th. And then after that, at the door, it's $59. And the web link to register? Yes, yes, I'll do that now. Yes. Okay, it's www.wbecsouth.org slash gwgt. Oh, wait a minute. Let's Can you do that once one more time? This is www.wbecsouth, and that's wbecsouth.org forward slash. GWGT 2012. Okay. And you can always call, I mean, folks could call me to get the link or to get more information. Sure. And what is, what is that number? My phone number is 901 413 1315. Okay. All right, and I would also like to announce that Anita Black will be speaking at Click and Connect in September. Mark your calendars uh, to be here. Do not want to miss this event. It will be the third Thursday of September from 9 to 11 right here in the large room where, where we were last week, Julie. Um, and it will be virtual as well for those watching virtually. Okay, and did you Thank want you. to share live your uh, Mountain Momentum and your website? My website is www.map, M-A-P, Momentum, M-O-M-E-N-T-U-M.com. And MAP for me star, uh, stands for Management Assistance Programs. So the business plan development and other facets of achieving success in your business is included in a MAP, um, or one of the MAPs that we offer. So we help business owners a lot of women develop business plans and access capital. And if I may add something to that, she lives the whole living on purpose. I mean, Nita, you couldn't pick a better person to help you because she's going to help you stay the course and have fun and live in balance while she's helping you get your business on track or introduce it to a new level of growth. But she's going to help you not just work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. But to keep balance in your life, so I, we had we had so much fun. One year when when the economy really started turning down, we had already agreed that we were going to do Saturday workshops, and every Saturday, once a month, she would focus on uh, a business component, and I would focus on uh, a module of living on purpose, and we made them synergistic. So there was the business side and the, the living on purpose side, and it was. A blast, and I went through every module she did. Sometimes with a hangdog head, <laughs> man, how I've gotten away from this. But she makes it comfortable. No, not always comfortable. But she makes it safe and confidential. <laughs> so um, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm so glad to see you, Julie. Yes, yes, absolutely, Thank you. Julie. I'm going to put online your website and uh, another of what you do as well, so that you not only get the exposure here, but you get it on the web. So, what is your, your website? It's www.gosimplysavvy, which is S A V V Y, dot com. And tell us in just a few short words what that means. It's professional organizing and interior style. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. And Beverly, I already put you on. And uh, you. Mom, I'm going to put you on and just put It's Time with Jesus online, right? That it is, uh, that's your URL. I did it. I should know that. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and we all know BOCI. <laughs> that's how we got that's here. That's right. That's right. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start networking um, with one another. Um, I encourage you to look at uh, Shelley's book, and uh, I, it's, it's a must-read. Also, um, 
Beverly's jewelry. She can design any piece you have. I mean, she's amazing. And redesign. Um, uh, look at my mother's books and also talk about the services that you offer. So let's grab some coffee and network. And, and we can also do a tour of the office if you would like. One. Living a balanced life over coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <it is. laughs> Thank you for joining us virtually online. Visit us online at businessovercoffee.biz. Get your professional membership today. Um, it's only $100 for the entire year. That's less than $10 per month. And or $75 for? Um, yes, we have a special right now through October 31st for a donation of $75 to our nonprofit professional boost you get your professional membership so if you need more info on that call our office at 901-820-4469 we'll see you next time until next week next thursday dutch lunch don't forget at sharky's here in memphis and we'll be announcing what's going to be happening from a 9 to 11 uh, next week but next thursday at 11 o'clock right here locally you will join Virginia Rowland from Ridgeway Business Center and everybody here um, and have Dutch lunch. It's going to be a very exciting networking event, no agenda but yours. So until next week, continue to bring everyone together. Thank you for joining us. And thank all of you as well. Thank you.